Although Affinity Photo does not have a dedicated 1-bit black and white mode, it is still possible to create 1-bit dithered black and white images. One way to do this is by using the export to GIF feature and selecting a black and white palette. You can also experiment with different resampling methods, but these will only affect the output if you change the dimensions of the exported image. To see the effect of the different resampling methods, I will create two exports and load them back into Affinity. The resulting images look good and upon close examination we can see that the pixels are only black and white. There is not much difference between the two images, which makes sense because I did not change the export resolution. Another way to create dithered 1-bit black and white image is by applying a halftone effect. Let me decrease the cell size until the image is recognizable. A cell size of 3 seems to work well. I can also control the appearance of the image by adjusting the contrast. Although this image appears to be dithered, upon closer inspection by zooming in, we can see that it actually contains grey values and is not a true 1-bit black and white image. To fix this, we can use a threshold adjustment to control which greys are converted to black and white. The resulting image is a 1-bit black and white image, but it is not as smoothly dithered as the GIF version. I will move the threshold adjustment as a child and then disable it, so I can show you that instead of using a threshold adjustment, I can also remove the grey values by applying the halftone image in hard mix blend mode with the original image. The resulting image contains color because the original image had color. To fix this, I can use a channel mixer to convert it to black and white by setting the channel to grey. It is important to make sure that the channel mixer is applied to the original image, so I will need to move it down in the layer stack, just above the original image. This will give us the 1-bit image again. We can further fine-tune the output of the 1-bit black and white image by adjusting the intensity and the alpha in the channel mixer. At first glance, it may seem like there is still some grey in the image, but when we zoom in, we can see that it is actually made up only by black and white pixels. The appearance of grey is due to the way the image is being rendered. Even though these two methods create reasonable results, there are alternative methods that can produce better results when dithering an image. One of the most effective methods is the Atkinson method, developed by Mr. Atkinson while he was working at Apple in the 1980s. This method was specially designed to create high-quality dithered images on the hardware available at that time. I have created a simple dither tool which we can use to dither images. The link to the tool will be in the description. I can just copy an image and in the tool I can paste the image using command V or alternatively we can drag and drop an image. The image is dithered using the Atkinson method by default which, as you can see, looks amazing. You can also change the dithering method, like for example to Bayer, which uses a threshold, or Floyd Steinberg. The final option is None, which is basically a threshold like in Affinity. I will put it back to Atkinson and right-click to copy the image. In some browsers this might not be possible, but you can use the download link in this case. Back in Affinity, I can paste the dithered image. Pretty cool. So why would you need a 1-bit dithered image? To be honest, I don't know. But one possible use could be to add some noise to an image. To further increase the noise level, I will add a live noise filter to the dithered image. Once we have extra noise in the dithered image, I can apply this in soft light blend mode. And with a little bit of blend range magic, we can create an interesting noisy image. By adjusting the opacity, we can dim down the final effect to make the noise look very subtle. Another reason could be that you want to add an image to an old retro computer, for example on this old Mac. Let's go in super speed for a while. And here is what you can get. I hope you liked this video and learned something new again.
In the upcoming videos, I will do a follow-up and share with you the Turing diffusion method to the their images in a more creative way. Thank you for watching and until the next video.